Hi everybody, happy Sunday. I am so glad to be here on a beautiful day in urban San Diego with my friend Mia Vons. Mia is the founder and director of Good Neighbor Gardens. Hi everyone. <laughs> Good Neighbor Gardens is committed to connecting people to their local food system through gardens, through garden education, and through neighborhood events. So Mia will tell us a little bit more about that. But one of the things for Vivacious Dish this year that's very important and near to my heart is just to remind people the importance of food as a platform for deepening our connections, our connections to ourselves, to each other, to our community, and then to Mother Earth as well. So in that light, I'd love for me to share a little bit more about Good Neighbor Gardens and what you're all about. San Diegans are really special in the sense that they want to connect with one another. People are um, a little suspicious about the food that they're able to purchase at the store. They want to eat a portion of their diet from their own space. And so we've just come together as a community and we've decided to use our own residential yards to grow food and to share it. So that way we can nourish each other, not just with nutrition, but also as, a, as people. So Good Neighbor Gardens is a collection of folks that want to gather together and have parties and celebrate that goodness and celebrate what each other has to bring both to the table and to each other's lives. We also work in elementary schools teaching children three things. The science of growing food, which is actually vo a vocation, um, life skills, and then community engagement to actually actualize and manifest that, that knowledge in, in their community. So we're really taking San Diego to a whole new direction of developing food and developing relationship. And we just see that there's really no end to the positive things that can come from that. Beautiful. And so I'm so glad to be here with Mia today. We're going to take a nice walk through the garden and we're going to harvest some Yay. produce. <laughs> um, we're going to glean some lemons and we're going to harvest some Romanesco, or Romanesco broccoli leaves. Yeah. We're going to harvest some Romanesco broccoli leaves um, that we're going to use in the recipe today. Awesome. So Good. another way to bring access to, to all of you through, yeah. this, through the food system. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> So on our walk through the garden with Mia, we picked some beautiful Romanesco broccoli leaves and we're going to turn these into a healthy and delicious snack, making nacho cheese chips with them. So we also picked some lemon that we'll use in our sauce as well. We're going to take the broccoli leaves and we're going to pull them off of the stems and then we're going to tear them into small pieces that are bite size, perfect for our chips. You can make this recipe with any brassica leaf. That includes cauliflower, kale, or broccoli like we have here. And the great part about this is that these leaves typically are thrown away. So oftentimes when you're in the store, you might be eating the flower of the broccoli or cauliflower, which is the bulbs that you're used to seeing. But the leaves are high in nutrients. Um, they're very robust. So a great healthy option and a nice way to repurpose and reuse food that might otherwise get thrown away, especially if you're growing brassicas in your own garden at home. So once you have your leaves all set up like that, we're gonna get ready to make our cheese sauce that's gonna go on top of these. We're gonna start with some cashews. These have been soaked overnight. Uh, you typically wanna soak your cashews for between four and six hours in filtered water and a little salt. And the benefit of this is that it helps to release the phytic acid to make them easier to digest. So all nuts and seeds have high levels of phytic acid. It's protective of them and prevents them from germinating prior to the right time to germinate, but it can make it them hard for our bodies to digest. So it's good to soak them. So we've drained these. We're gonna put these in our blender, like so. And then we're also gonna use some nutritional yeast in this recipe. Nutritional yeast is a great alternative to dairy. Um, it is a high nutrient food and a great option here. Next, we're gonna use a red pepper. This is great, it brings lots of flavor and color to the dish. So you're just gonna take out the stem part and then you can just tear it into small pieces. 
and put it in your blender food processor like so. We're also gonna add some spices. We have organic garlic powder and organic cumin for extra flavor, and then a little bit of sea salt. I like using the coarse ground sea salt, but you can use any sea salt that you like. We're also gonna take the lemon that we picked in the yard and add this. This brings some nice lightness and flavor to the dish. And always bringing along my trusty lemon squeezer, a great kitchen tool if you don't have one already. It's one of my favorites. It makes pressing lemons and limes very simple. And then finally, we're gonna add a little bit of coconut oil. Coconut oil is a great option as a healthy fat. It holds its molecular structure even at high temperatures, so it's great for baking and cooking with, which is a good alternative to other vegetable oils that do break down when heated. So now that we have all those ingredients in our blender or food processor, we're gonna blend until smooth and creamy. So once you have your nacho cheese sauce smooth and creamy, you're gonna add your broccoli leaves to the mix, and then you're gonna use your hands to blend it up. It's always fun to get nice and dirty through the process. Whenever I can get my hands in my food, I'm happy about that. Once you have your leaves really well coated, you're gonna lay them out on a baking sheet, one by one. You want them to be not touching, and if you use parchment paper, it'll help to prevent them from sticking. Once you have your tray completely covered, you're gonna take this and put it in your oven at its lowest temperature. That's 170 degrees in my oven. Some are even lower, so between 150 and 170 is great. You can also put these in a dehydrator and you're gonna dry them out for between two and three hours. So once your chips come out of the oven or dehydrator, they'll be nice and dry and crispy like this. You can sprinkle them with a little bit of red pepper flakes for extra flavor if you like, and they're ready to enjoy. So signing out for now from this Good Neighbor Garden and Vivacious Dish.